Today we are here in London, England, and we are headed to Windsor Castle and Hampton Court Palace. But to get to Hampton Court Palace, we have to take three different trains. So it's gonna be a long, long day. It always seems like I find my way to a train station. This is where we're headed, National Rail, second train. I wanna say I've been in this train station before. Yeah, it was whenever I was headed to Helsinki, Finland. I'll link that video right here, but same thing again, this train station, it's very rustic and beautiful. They hand to London, when it comes to the train station, people like this that work here will make sure if you have a, if you have a wheelchair or disability, they'll get you on the train and they'll call up. Really appreciate Thank it, ma'am. Thank you, you're welcome. I think I'm on to a new melody. It's not a mix of salt, bad talking, open wounds. Heavy breathing and overeating. Y'all know how I love my ceilings. When you first enter this palace, you have to look up. Like, wow. And I feel like a lot of people are going to walk by without actually looking up at this. So we finally made it to Hampton Court Palace, and this palace is ginormous and beautiful. Super excited to see what's here, but apparently this palace was not created by the monarchs of England. It originally was owned by Cardinal Thomas Wolseley, but due to his downfall while working for King Henry VIII, he actually gave it to King Henry VIII. This was King Henry VIII's favorite palace. This was the royal kitchen back in the day, and it's actually multiple buildings. If that, if, if that doesn't tell you that, you know, this was a palace and King Henry VIII lived here, I don't know what else will. I'm guessing this used to be a huge oven. Looking at the black marks and then the sound effects, yeah, it definitely has to be. That is definitely a huge oven. Wow. I know this is a palace, but it's just still crazy to think that this is one part of the kitchen. King Henry VIII, though, apparently was one of the biggest kings they had here in England. Welcome to the Tudor Kitchens. So here we are in Henry VIII's Tudor Kitchens. Uh, we've got one fire going. In Tudor times, there would have been six cooking for over 500 people because that's the number of people that come to Hampton Court when the king was in residence. Cooks, servants, guards, soldiers, advisors. The king paid for two meals a day for all of them. Um, so we've got one fire, like I said. There would have been six. It would have been like an absolute furnace in here. Uh, Spanish ambassadors described it as being uh, like a veritable hell because it was so hot. Um, the diet would have been uh, beef, mostly, uh, would have been cooked here, but also mutton and veal. Every person would have got two loaves of bread and four pints of beer with both their meals. Uh, meal times were 10 o'clock in the morning and four o'clock in the afternoon. So the king was really generous to his staff in terms of feeding them. Um, he also paid them as well. And this was uh, King Henry VIII or? This is King Henry VIII, so we're talking over 500 years ago. I feel like whenever you're traveling around the world, you have to make sure that you put locals in the video. That's the best thing you can do. So I'm Davion West. Hi, I'm Peter. Thank you for being in the video. We appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Okay, I think I found the wine cellar. And it'd be really cool if you could actually get some real wine in here. Oh, yep, this is the wine cellar. This is one of the best things about when you're traveling and you're in a huge palace is the fact that you can just roam the hallways and then find something something like this. I'm sorry, my Danish subscribers, but this palace right now is winning simply because they have tulips here. They have freaking tulips, like what? And then looking at this dragon, and then there's more tulips. Okay, we gotta go explore more of that actual palace, not the grounds, or not the gardens. This was King Henry VIII's throne room. Not that luxurious, but still a throne room nice, beautiful tapestries. Just a few words, England, wow. 
Hampton Court Palace is beautiful and stunning. All the way from the kitchens being ginormous and just being very fitting for a king. And talking to one of the, the workers here and how big the fires were and what the kitchens were like. And you know, even though King Henry VIII beheaded a few of his wives and divorced a lot of them so he could, you know, get a male heir. Anyways, anyways, apparently he cared a lot about his workers here and would make sure that they were fed right. Now, I don't hear a lot of kings or queens doing that, at least not back in the day. It's, it's just magnificent. And the Great Hall, where King Henry VIII had a lot of tapestries commissioned, lining the walls, beautiful telling stories, and then looking up at the ceiling, don't miss that ceiling, because y'all know how I love ceilings. It's so beautiful, but I still got to give it to my Danes. Denmark, y'all have some of the best great halls I have ever seen and some palaces. They even have a sundial. That, that is crazy. With a little crown on top. I've never really seen a real life sundial. Okay, I've seen a sundial in Prague before. But besides that, you don't see sundials everywhere. So apparently there is six different gardens here at this palace and this is the privy garden and this is one of those gardens that you're going to actually want to come see especially during the tulip season in april it is honestly breathtaking gives a backdrop of the palace in the back and it's just it's just beautiful that the public can actually enjoy this now what do you do here ma'am i'm i run the volunteer gardeners Volunteer gardeners. Yeah, I'm a paid, but the volunteers, we have lots of volunteer gardeners here who help us look after these amazing gardens. So if anyone watched the video would like to come and volunteer, please contact the palace. <laughs> oh, I did not know that at all. Hi, I'm Davion. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And your name? Sarah. Sarah? Sarah Goff. <laughs> nice to meet you, Sarah Goff. <laughs> have a great day. We appreciate it. And honestly, like Thank the you. great work because we know like palaces, it is not that easy to keep the gardens like this. <laughs> Honestly, I did not know what to expect with coming to this palace. I definitely did not expect the gardens to be so beautiful and well taken care of. Seeing the beautiful tulips everywhere and in speaking to Sarah and finding out that you can volunteer here at the palace gardens. I don't know. It just really just shows like love of country for all the volunteers that are here. They're volunteering to keep up the garden because having palace gardens like this that's definitely not easy. It's a lot of hard work. So for all the men and women that take care of these gardens, thank you. And if you want to come serve your country and volunteer, volunteer here at the palace grounds. Love of country is what we say in the military. And that's, that's the energy and the vibe I get from this. Love of country. And just, it's just cool to be able to say that you worked in the palace gardens. Like, like what? <laughs> All right, Dad, you got to tell me, are you excited for the next uh, castle? Yes, I am. Well, how would you feel about uh, Hampton Court Palace? I didn't see you in there because he left me and started just getting lost by himself. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking to the people who worked there. They gave me a little history of why things were the way they were when it came to uh, where the apartments for the king and queen were located. Um, it was nice. And, of course, again, back on another train southwestern railway you gotta love trains america we really need this again more of it i know the east coast has it but overall in america we need more trains i feel like you've never traveled throughout europe if you're never racing to a train just like us just like that we missed a train Welcome to Europe, where you miss trains and sometimes, sometimes you'll actually catch the train. Looks like we got 10 minutes left until the train's here. Super excited for Windsor Castle. Hopefully, or not even hopefully, maybe it's better than Hampton Court Palace. Mind the gap. Because it's for the train. They really want you to mind the gap here, y'all. All right, last train and we'll be at the castle. Ah, we made it. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I fell asleep on the train. I looked back and both of my parents were asleep. But we are now finally here, and you can see the castle. You can see the castle from the train station. Now, I do think the reason why I was not allowed to film inside is because this place is still a royal residency. So someone in the royal family lives here. I don't personally know. If you know, please comment down below to just 
enlighten me because I do love to learn a lot about these places. Some quick facts about this castle. This castle was built in the 11th century and is the oldest to date royal castle that is still being used by a monarch. That's that's wild. I didn't know this about Windsor Castle, but they have a chapel here and Queen Elizabeth II, may her majesty rest in peace. She's actually buried here with her mom, her dad, and also her husband, Prince Philip. Now, you can't film in there at all. It's one of the few chapels I've never had the chance to actually film in, but I do actually like that. It definitely is a good sign of respect. Can't even wear hats in there. Also, Prince Harry was married in this, in this, uh, this chapel. Somehow we were able to do it, y'all. We made it to Hampton Court Palace and Windsor Castle. But I don't recommend doing both of these in the same day. But honestly, breathtaking, just so blessed that we're here. But I definitely need to go find some food and go lay down. I don't know where I'm headed to next, but I know it's somewhere here in the UK or maybe Ireland. And I know that I want y'all there with me. So hit that subscribe button.